Hello everyone, it is Evan from The Trade Risk on Wednesday, November 11th, here with a market recap video. We are first going to analyze the current market environment. We're gonna look at some other markets, some leading sectors, individual names, and then a few trade ideas for the remainder of the week. So we'll jump into today's action with the SPY ETF and the sellers are still in control here. We closed down 43 basis points on the day and this was our sixth day now pulling back from these highs up here around 211, a little over 211 and that was last Wednesday. So we're continuing to pull back but we're doing so in some very con in a very constructive fashion. So we are kind of just meandering down here very slowly and sort of methodically we're coming back into these fast moving averages we are below the eight period exponential moving average but we are still above the 20 period moving average and so far i think all things considered from a trend perspective that is still pretty healthy given how far we came throughout the month of october we're still holding up in the top 15 percent of this entire move now of course that can all change on a dime we could be down two percent tomorrow um, and 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 we have to and then and, and then we have to reevaluate that situation but for now things are, are remaining pretty constructive for the bulls now the levels that I'm watching are the, the near term levels that I'm watching are sort of these cluster of lows that we're starting to see form here and really it's just two days this was uh, two Monday's candle and then Tuesday's low so both of these lows coming in right around 207 today we didn't quite make it down there we we gapped up uh, positive and the sellers took control and took us green to red and then you know that's that's pretty much how this day went so we didn't quite get to retest this 207 yet but that's the that's the first sort of line of upper level momentum defense that the market is showing uh, some resiliency to. So 207 on the downside, 209 on the upside. I think that's a quick two point range for the very near term traders. You can start to key off of and, and kind of figure out what where the momentum is leaning uh, based on those levels. Below 207, you know, you have this small pivot here that we made back in uh, the middle and end of October uh, on the on the 27th here. So right around 206, you know, and that would be below the 20 period moving average. So again, even if if we did come down to 206 you're still talking the top third of the trend overall you know a 50% retracement would be back down here right around 200 201 uh, and that's you know certainly a possibility and a 50% retracement isn't still the you know isn't still a extremely bearish scenario so just some things to keep in mind of course we never made it up to retest these all-time highs up around 212 in the SPY. So that is still a potential upside target magnet, if you will, uh, for the bullish scenario. So that's sort of where I am uh, thinking about this market right now. I think, you know, it's time to sort of tread carefully. We are pulling back, but we're doing so pretty reasonably. Granted, there are some, you know, there were a lot of individual names that really got hit today, some down five, 10 percent that the indices are masking. Uh, but you also had some big winners today, or you had at least a cluster of outperformers like the Facebooks, the Amazon, so some of those technology names are continuing to hold a bid. So it's a very interesting market, it's a stock picker's market as it always seems to be. Um, so there is opportunity for sort of both sides here, both the bulls and the bears, I think, um, in this type of environment. So again, still trying to look at this constructively. I am light, we have lightened up a little bit with our portfolio, just naturally getting stopped out of some things as we've been pulling back, but we still remain long this market. And, uh, you know, until, until uh, until we see more damage or until some of our other stops get triggered, uh, I think that's the way we're going to continue. Now, if we look at some other indices, the IWM, again, pulling back today, but it's still holding above this breakout area of around 116. Again, it's above all the fast moving averages. It's tough to be too, too bearish here. Uh, but again, you do want to recognize that we are softening up a little bit and again just be able to react and have your levels in front of you the cues same thing pulling back a little bit again you can see today basically flat so the most constructive of the indices you have some very clear support right here right around 112.20 or at least that's a level that you'd want to take notice of uh, I was holding a support back here in the middle of uh, the end of October so you want to see if it can hold there and hold that gap perhaps we need to fill that gap it is pretty uh, it is pretty glaring right there. So we'll have to see how that holds up in the near future. But that's essentially 
how I'm looking at the markets. If we jump into some other markets, we'll start with TLT, and this one is starting to roll over. Again, we were watching 123 for a while. We had this 119 level where price is pretty much stopped right now, uh, this pivot here from mid-September. But you can see we do have this rollover. It was attempted kind of like a double top here where it tried to get back above uh, the August highs in October, it couldn't quite do it, rolled over. So now it's just, it's still in this sort of messy area. Back here, again, ultimately 115 or so is going to be the bigger level of support that you're going to want to see buyers step in on the bonds. But um, for now, it's kind of no man's land. It's stretched from the moving averages, so you do want to be a little careful there. USO clearly starting to roll over here. Uh, we had this little sideways pattern. We had support holding right around $14. And that is uh, clearly giving way now, down 2.3%. So again, you want to eye these lows down here around 1240. Again, you did have this pivot right here at 1360. So maybe, you, and we just about touched it today. So maybe you do see some some type of reaction off this level. Again, it was just a one-day event, so it's tough to see that. Tough to think that there would be too much support there, but you do want to take notice of it. It is a reference point. Uh, but USO right now, again, moving averages, the fast ones curling over. Want to be a little cautious here, not too optimistic on that until it starts to reclaim some resistance. Same thing with UNG, but this one much more so has been beaten up. It's still in a downtrend. Nothing has changed in this story. Uh, it's still uh, just the sellers are in control here all around. If we look at the metals, they've, you know, of course had a turn for the worse now at the throughout the uh, month of October. It started off pretty constructive and then it just really kind of gave way. It's been clearing clearing back down through these prior interesting points. Um, it's been gapping lower and just selling off all day. So not constructive at all. It's back here uh, to this area. This is where it's finding some support right now. Um, and you know this is going to be an important level uh, for the gold bulls to hold on to. Uh, you know it is pretty stretched here, so I wouldn't be surprised to see a bounce. But um, it's been stretched this whole way down, so you got to be cautious here. Not too optimistic on gold right now. Silver, similar situation. It's back to support. It's been getting uh, really beaten up recently over the past few weeks. It is stretched as well. It's near support. Maybe maybe it gets a bounce in here, but um, tough to trust it right now. There's a lot of momentum still to the downside, so you got to be careful in those names. Now, if we look at some individual sectors for the markets, um, XLF, here's a sector that's still continuing to hold up pretty well. It's still above its its eight-period exponential moving average. It was down just slightly today. Uh, very, very constructive action. This is a strong sector. Uh, XLF, why this is the discretionary sector again this is holding up pretty well all things considered battling with some of these fast moving averages the industrials are holding up well still on top of most of their moving averages healthcare even though it was beaten up a little bit today it's going to be an important level for it to hold hopefully we don't see uh, the bulls don't see continuation in this tomorrow uh, to the downside because then maybe you're going to get a little more of a rollover here but still holding up all things considered and technology still holding up as well. So really there's, you know, there, there's again, the, the pullback so far has seemed pretty contained. Um, and again, that can change. On the downside, XLP, the staples, these are starting to roll over a bit more. You can see they're below the fast moving averages. Energy now with USO and and uh, some of those commodities rolling over, this is getting hit. And even the semis are looking a little interesting here. Um, they're looking vulnerable. They're still hanging out, but um, they're right at the support right here around 53 and three quarters. So you do want to keep an eye on those as well. Now, Let's get into some individual names. We'll jump into Apple. This had the news out yesterday. Uh, I believe it was cutting uh, supplies or it was doing something. I know it was in the news. Um, I didn't really pay too much attention to it. I believe that was the cause of this gap down. Uh, again, you saw a little more sideways weakness today, starting to curl these fast moving averages over. So, you know, Apple's sort of in the penalty box here. You gotta be careful, especially when it's below these moving averages, if it's gonna reject back into this range. So for now, it's kind of an avoid for me. I think the momentum certainly has shifted here, but um, again, you wanna see how this reacts for, you know, maybe the close of this week to see if it stays weak or if, is this just gonna be a one or two day uh, event. I could put the bearish uh, doomsday kind of scenario that this is maybe one big topping pattern here, uh, like a head and shoulders, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, with this kind of top over here, um, and now if this is just, uh, you know, if this has been another sort of intermediary top, um, maybe, you know, this is the neckline down here. Again, um, 
way too early to call it, but um, that's an interesting pattern, I suppose, um, for those of you who like that. Google, this one continues strong, so this is our pocket of strength today, all-time highs, continuing to trend above the, fast uh, the eight period exponential moving average. Amazon, again, a lot of strength here as well, continue to new all-time highs, pulling away from the fast moving averages, very constructive. Facebook new closing all-time highs today very constructive here as well so these you know certainly where some of the highlights are Netflix uh, hanging out close positive still you know contending with some of this overhead supply up here so you know it'd be interesting to see how this one holds up but um, Netflix still kind of sideways uh, range bound in my opinion until it can really start to clear some of this overhead supply uh, next we'll look at Twitter not so uh, not so constructive here down two percent this one is uh, you got to be cautious in this one it broke through our support or at least our level of interest here right around twenty eight dollars below the fast moving averages it's in the penalty box you got to be careful here it has vulnerability to kind of head down uh, to these twenty five dollar lows these levels down here so uh, you got to be a little careful with Twitter GoPro uh, this one really just hanging out here it's figuring out its next move it had the gap down from earnings and now it's moving sideways real tight so I think your levels are pretty clear here right around twenty four sixty and twenty six dollars is the range to have on watch Alibaba this one was weak today down two percent but still all things considered and the move that it's had uh, it's due for a pullback this is healthy in my my opinion still um, you know above some of these fast moving averages so something to uh, keep a note uh, on and finally Tesla had a bit of a recovery today was selling off reversed closed near the highs so that is constructive but again uh, still in just this long-term range here uh, not too interesting one way or the other to me in Tesla now if we look at some individual names for the rest of the week VRX is the first one and this one of course now has been all over the news, very headline driven, a lot of uh, debates going on here with some of the big funds involved and whether or not this is a good buy or not. You got to be careful in this, just be given how much uh, it is in the news right now. This could, you know, could be stories out or, or info coming out after hours, uh, dramatically shifting the price. Uh, on this uh, by the time the open comes tomorrow so you got to be careful but with all that said with the caution sort of advised uh, a, a all-time uh, or a 52 week low close I believe today really uh, at, at a point where all of these uh, uh, the prior four day kind of lows have taken place so uh, you got to be careful with this one but this looks like a nice short entry here potentially if you want to try and ride this momentum lower again um, Definitely uh, be careful on position sizing there, but VRX looks vulnerable with some continuation lower. Um, HLI is one, uh, I don't know if I've mentioned this one recently, but uh, here's one I'm watching. Recent IPO, very, very, very clear range uh, that it's carved out here. So I'd say look at around $23, a break and close above these highs. I think this one uh, could start to break its IPO range, if you will, and uh, that one could be on the move if it does. NCI, here's another one that's been range bound. I've been talking about this one a little bit. Uh, still looking pretty nice to me. It's hanging out here, not ready yet, uh, but very clear range here if it starts to break through either way uh, you could probably make a play on that and then finally EWZ this one's been in my back pocket I like this one this is Brazil uh, had a nice 2% close update today uh, and it's getting back to the top end of this range so I do like this on a close above 2480 or so I think that one looks really constructive and that's all I have for ideas today uh, and that's all I have on this video so again if you like the video do subscribe on the bottom right sign up for my newsletter if you like the content uh, and as always Thank you for watching. I will catch you next time.